All right, hello everybody. Uh, long time no see. So, just wanted to give you a quick update. I guess this is part eight in the series now. Um, and yeah, I uh, first of all, I'm just gonna say I recorded this video already, and I spent a bunch of time talking about the hardware. Went on the computer, we went through the schematic a little bit, PCB, the code, and talked about all sorts of stuff. But it kind of just evolved into a bunch of rambling and blah blah, so... Uh, I'm just gonna try to keep this one a little bit quicker than that. Uh, so as you can see, obviously, I have uh, picked up this 6502 computer project again, um, after like a year. <laughs> and. Uh, bit the bullet, got a PCB made, and sure enough it works, and uh, that's not to say it works perfectly, we'll talk about that briefly. Um, but first let's just look at the hardware. So uh, we have two VIAs now, and uh, pin headers for their GPIO pins, uh, the same ACIA, um, just the three pin header for the UART, uh, the same RAM, the same ROM, Mostly the same address decode logic, uh, a little bit more because we added some more stuff. Um, obviously dip switches. Uh, these aren't populated right now because I didn't, I, I forgot to buy the pull-up resistors. Um, so I only have 330 ohm resistor arrays available and it, it does actually work with those but I, you know, don't want to be using those for pull-ups. Uh, so, for now, those are unpopulated, but, you know, next time I order from DigiKey, I'll get those. Um, and then we have seven-segment LED displays. Um, these, <laughs> this is kind of funny, when I picked these, I didn't really look at the price, uh, nor did I really pay any attention to the size, but I stuck with them, so here they are. They look good enough, but... Definitely need to get some cheaper ones for the next version of this. Um, and then these two guys here are resistor arrays for current limiting for these. Uh, they're 470 ohms, and actually it turns out that that was not uh, nearly high enough. So these are not actually turned on and off. They're I'm doing basically PWM, pseudo PWM maybe, uh, in software using a timer from from one of these guys. Um, and then these two here are just 8-bit uh, registers, basically flip-flops, uh, that are addressable by the CPU, so we can write to those. Um, this here is a resistor array for uh, pull-ups for the uh, interrupt lines. This here is, I believe the exact name is a 8-line to 3-line priority encoder, um, something along those lines, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, and then this here is another one of these same registers. And basically what this does is it prioritizes the interrupts and it uh, lets the CPU actually read this register to find out which device triggered the interrupt. Uh, so I thought, yeah, I found that on 6502.org, I believe, and I was like, well, that's simple enough, and it's kind of neat, so why not? Uh, and then with this, you can have, uh, you can use a, a lookup table, or a, a jump table, um, instead of polling, basically, uh, in your interrupt handler. So that's pretty neat. Um, again, address decode logic, it's mostly the same as it was. There, I can't remember, there may be a few more things to that as well. Um, this chip here, first of all, I got the wrong footprint for it somehow. Don't know how I did this, but um, those uh, bottom two pins are not supposed to be there, so they are unconnected, so what are you going to do? And obviously it's not populated, and I have a jumper there, uh, and that's just because when I put that chip in, the computer doesn't function at all, uh, and I haven't really investigated why that is. It, I probably just made some stupid mistake uh, in the design there. 
but it's not actually needed. This this was sort of a future proofing thing that I added, <clears throat> um, basically to allow me to to waste less of the address space that I'm using for memory mapped I/O. But uh, on this configuration, there's no need for that. <clears throat> um, and then here uh, we have a 7805 uh, crystal oscillator reset button, power LED, and then this guy here is, uh, it's a max in part, and it uh, basically, you give it power and ground, and when the power goes on, its output goes low for 100 milliseconds and then goes high, so that's our power on reset. And that's, I think, pretty much it for a quick overview. Um, <clears throat> now again, I said this demo, uh, I'm using one of the timers from these guys to uh, essentially dim the LEDs. If I don't do that, if I just turn them on, uh, first of all, it'd be so bright that you uh, wouldn't be able to see very well. And second of all, this voltage regulator would be a little bit too hot to want to really touch it. Um, so I, again, I you know got to buy some different resistors, and and uh, that'll be fine. Uh, and finally, on the back, we have one, two bodge resistors. Uh, this one, I forgot to tie the non-maskable interrupt input high, and I'm not using it right now, so I, I left it unconnected. <clears throat> and that obviously wouldn't have worked. And then this guy, uh, that resistor is actually across the crystal for the ACIA. And again, that's I just forgot about it. Um, so that's basically all there is to say about the hardware really quickly, um, I think. Now, I think the last thing I want to mention is the, the problem that I am still stuck trying to debug. Um, so right now, you can see this is doing a bunch of stuff or whatever. Not a bunch, but it's doing some stuff. All of the code that is running on this computer right now is running in an interrupt for one of the timers from... I'm using timer one in both of the VIAs, so... Uh, however, there's nothing running outside of, of an interrupt. Um, and the, the main reason for that, I wanted to demo something where I had this running as well as something else running just like in the main code. Uh, but I am facing this issue where whatever is running in the main code, somehow, um, whenever the first interrupt happens, that it, it never jumps back into that code correctly. Um, and so that it'll run until the first interrupt and then never run again. Um, and the most obvious thing would be uh, I don't know, either the stack pointer is is getting messed with, um, like, as in, you know, someone's pushing without popping or popping when, they sh when there was nothing to pop from the stack, something like that. Um, I don't, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. There may be something like that happening, but I haven't been able to find it so far, and there's not that much code, so I, you know feel fairly confident about that. Uh, the other possibility, maybe, is that um, garbage data is getting written to the stack. But again, I haven't been able to find it. Um, so I, I'm really, right now, I'm really at a loss uh, for what that issue is. So, I mean, you know, I'll keep, uh, keep on debugging it and, and whatnot. But... Um, yeah, for now, I think that's pretty much it. Um, oh, there's my cat. You might hear her, you might see her. I won't see her. I guess you can see her, though. <laughs> um, uh, one last thing I want to mention, uh, and I'm, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this in a prior video, and I sincerely apologize if I haven't, um, but uh, the initial design of this, the one that you saw on the breadboard, and even still now, this design 
is heavily based on uh, one that I found online on someone's GitHub I.O. site, if I recall. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but uh, I will definitely be linking that in the description um, because they definitely deserve more credit than I do. Um, you know, I've, I've taken this that design and, and added to it and, and whatnot, but, uh, you know, without them, uh, it might be different. So uh, definitely want to make sure I don't not mention that. <laughs> So hopefully I've mentioned it in the past, but I kind of feel like I haven't. So anyway, I think that's all I've got for now. Um, let me know what you think. If you have any ideas about the issue with the interrupts, um, you know, or anything else. Um, but other than that, until next time, thank you guys for watching.